Greetings, welcome back to Game Design. This is lesson 12, Sprite Movement. So in previous lessons, we understood the draw loop where we can make it so anything inside that goes over and over and over again, we're now gonna show how to put that together in order to make something move. So first things first, go to the prediction and just like all of them, go ahead and pause and then come back and then once you have it all going, this is what you should see it do. All right, what's happening here? Well, the counter is zero. Background text size is the size of the counter, so it starts at zero. The text is the counter, so it starts at zero. Counter is zero. Zero plus one is one. It comes back up here. Now counter is one, we just said. It says one. One plus one is two. And you can see that's why this is getting bigger and bigger and the number is going up because the text size is going up every single time and the counter is going up every single time. But this function, this counter function, right, this counter pattern, we are going to use for the rest of the class for all kinds of different things. Score, moving stuff, um, we'll learn better ways to move stuff later, but for now, I mean, there's a very distinct advantage for using this counter pattern. Now, there's a video next, so go ahead and watch that. It's going to point out some things about how we paste things over and over and over again to make it look like it's moving, which I'll explain as well. So again, you'll have the video, go watch that. It's on the link. And then we'll just jump right into number three. And in this case, we're gonna make it so these move. Now one of them's already moving. And these are things you gotta think about how things are going, right? This is 400 for the Y this is zero, so to get from 400 to zero, you go down, right, or you minus. So let's look at the code real quick. Jet Y equals Jet Y minus three. So if Jet Y is 400, 400 minus three is 397, and then 397 minus three, and so on and so forth, that's how it's making it look up. And then because we have this background, I think I mentioned this before, right, we reset this and run it. If we don't have the background, we get that blur. Right, that's what the background is for as we're going through. So again, important to understand why we have that background. So it doesn't, what I call stamp. So now let's go ahead and just make the plane work. So we've got Sprite. So what's nice about this when you drag it out, oh, I'm sorry, show text. All right. So again, don't forget the, the background, All right? When you drag the X, right, we're moving the X over. Um, it pulls it over and then equals sprite dot x plus one. Right, and I'll show you some other things real quick, but for now we also need to change that calls right. We need to change this to plain, so I'm going to copy this and paste it to the two sprites, which I should just change that one in the first place. But there we go, plain x plus one, reset, run, and now it goes. Right, that's one. This is three. So if you want it faster, you make it larger and you can even make it even slower, right? I can go 0 0.1, right? And then you can, can't probably see it super well, but eventually you'll notice that it is further along than it was before. Maybe if I yeah, move the mouse there, you can kind of see that it is moving. Uh, and again, that's, that's it, right? That's how you can move stuff around. You just need to know what to plus, remember which sprite you're actually using, if you're doing X and Y, and you can keep going, so. <laughs> That's the, the premise for making something move. We've got a few more things to go over to make you think about, and then we'll get you to the functions. But in this case, right, again, making it move backwards. So we've got sprites, and this is the X. We want to move on the X axis, so we pull that over, and then tab it over because it didn't go to the right spot. And then go ahead, it is fly, X equals fly dot X minus two. Right, don't forget your semicolon. And we run it, and then it goes backwards now. So, again, it's just paying attention. Minus is that way for the x, plus is this way for the x, plus is down here, going this, going down. So, just kind of just think about it again. This is 400 and 0, so it's minus to go up, plus to go down. This is 400 and 0, so minus to go left, plus to go right. All right, da, da, da. got one more together and I'm gonna you hint on the last one, it's kind of hard. So in this case, you can actually make it diagonal, right? The mouse is going straight down. I can type in 
mouse dot x equals mouse dot x. If you if you mess this up, um, if I mess this up like x and then y over here, you're gonna get some weird results. So watch out for that as well, especially if they're both moving. All right, so I'm gonna run this, and now we can see it's an angle. Now if they're both equal, you'll notice that is a 45 degree angle. If we make the mouse x more, then it's going to go more at the upper angle, right? And if we make the y greater, then it's going to move more at a downward angle. So again, we can choose the angle that we want for the mouse based on what we use <coughs> for the number, right? The more the y, the more downward it goes, the more the x, the more to the side it goes, and if they're equal, it is a 45 degree angle. And again, just depending on what you're trying to do, which this might help you again. If it's going off, you probably have an angle, right? If you're going through one of these practices, um, watch out for it. All right, so the next one is actually just a question. So you need to look at the code, look at the code, and then figure out which one is actually happening. So what, where is it starting, where is it going? So really focus on where is it starting what's it rotation um, and then figure out which one of those is it's going um, one more thing I guess before I, I jump on this might help you later you can do all of this as well with rotation so mouse dot rotation equals mouse dot because the thing where the rotation is zero Oops. All right and then zero plus one is still Two, one, and then two, and then three, and then four, or two, four, six, eight in this case, right? So um, maybe I should change this back to plus so you can see it better. So there you go. So you can rotate it as well using the exact same concept. All right, so the last thing I'm going to go over is this bubble one. So if you go to challenge nine, you'll see that there's this bubbles, and this gets students because it doesn't work exactly the same way. So I'll kind of give you some quick hits. You do need to use this concept of variable. And we're going to make the bubbles go up so it's the Y. And then let's go ahead and make it 450 because we want it off the end of the screen. And then we, we just draw our standard uh, ellipse, right? So ellipse. We don't want it under the background, so watch out for that. Don't put it under the background. Um, but we probably want it fairly tiny, right? Want a tiny bubble because it's just a bubble. Um, and then it's X. I'm just put 200 for now. You're going to need to make some more. But here's the kicker, right? It's the Y, right? The Y is the one that's going up. And you can make bubble Y1, bubble Y2, bubble Y3 for all your different bubbles. But I'm, just, again, I'm just showing you the basic concept of this and you, you got to do all the rest of making it work. I'm just showing you how it actually goes up because the last piece is, oh I didn't jump into this, sorry. Um, so var Y equals 450, ellipse, and then Y equals Y plus whatever, right? Now again, in this case, instead of having it save, this is why we use the game lab, right? It has the sprites ability to just store all that information like they pointed out at the beginning. However, you can, this is how you do it in the real world. For the, if you weren't in game lab, right? You control, you can grab the thing, you just put these as variables. So when I run this, it's stretching out the thing, right? Oh, I think I got the things back up. So, so part of my, this is the X, this is the Y, and this is the diameter and radius. Or no, sorry, radius. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. Um, so, because it uh, is a circle, we only need one. Oh, and again, even I do it. We want it to go up, so we use the minus sign. And it's going to take a few seconds to get on because it is at 450. But there you go. There's the bubble. So 10's probably not the right width, but the concept is the Y, right? You saw how I was able to make the Y go up. I can slow it down, make it slowing. I can make it start quicker. I can make it start on the screen. The point is using this code allows you to do stuff. And hopefully, again, as we're going through this, remember, as you're building your game, it's important to think about all these little different ways you can use to control your game because we'll learn all the code you need. You'll learn the if statements. We'll learn the variables. 
but you need to be able to use the logic in order to actually put it together and make stuff like this work, right? Otherwise, right, you wouldn't know how to do this, right? I, I mean, we taught you everything. You know what a variable is. We just taught you the counter pattern, but to do this one piece of code, right, this is where you take that next level and you do the problem solving. How could I get this to do it? I know how, I know how everything works. I need to put it together and do something that may not be unique. So with that, that's all there is to the lesson. Um, go ahead and make sure you finish all the practice, assessment, all the challenges. Hopefully this helps with this challenge. Have a good one. We'll see you next lesson.